Germany admits fears of Ukraine potentially firing Taurus missiles at Moscow. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has reiterated his disapproval of donating Taurus missiles to Ukraine. The head of the German government spoke during the so-called public dialogue in Dresden. This time, Scholz's argument to back his stance was the idea that the German-made missiles could potentially be launched at targets in Russia's capital, Moscow. A Taurus with the 500-kilometer range may hit some specific target in Moscow if used incorrectly. The politician said, Scholz added, with all diplomatic abstractness, others also took care of being aware of exactly where weapons landed. In Germany's case, it would imply involving German missile programming experts to make sure that missiles don't fly toward the wrong targets, Scholz claimed. Earlier, the German chancellor has repeatedly stated that German missiles are a much more complex system than British and French ones. I believe it would be impossible. From the very beginning, I clearly said there will be no German NATO soldiers in Ukraine and my position remains unwavering. The head of government emphasized. Scholz stressed that NATO and individual allies must not become a party to the conflict. We will prevent escalation. The war between Russia and NATO, the politician emphasized. He also admitted he was annoyed by criticism of him refusing to donate Taurus missiles to Ukraine as many forget that Germany has been sending much more than others, that it is currently the second largest arms supplier for Ukraine and if the US Congress fails to allocate more money, Germany will champion the list. The Chancellor has listed numerous weapons systems Germany has sent among other partners including tanks, MLR systems, air defense capabilities and more. Production of zinc coffins increased dramatically in Russia. They are sent to Ukraine for soldiers. An increase in the production of zinc coffins for Russian soldiers killed in Ukraine has suddenly become a cause for pride in Russia, Ukrainian journalist Yuri Butasov wrote on Telegram. He shared a screenshot of the Tambov Metal Service Plant Management's post on the Russian online social media and social networking service Vcontact. Friends, we have great news, the post read. Metal Service is expanding its product range and is now proud to present zinc coffins. Zinc coffins are not just a product, they are a symbol of care and respect for those who served and sacrificed their lives for our country. Earlier, a new dress by Spanish designer Balenciaga was causing a stir on social media thanks to its uncanny resemblance to a sleek black plastic bag used to transport dead Russian soldiers. Balenciaga shared a photo of this unique outfit on their Instagram on December the 16th with a price tag of around $6,500. The BBC, Russian service and news outlet Media Zona have confirmed the identity of around 45,000 Russian soldiers who died in Ukraine since the invasion began in February 2022. The issue of military casualties is extremely sensitive in both countries. Russia has banned criticism of the conflict and no official figures have been released since 2022. The BBC, together with Media Zona and the team of volunteers, managed to establish the names of 45,123 Russian militaries who died in the war in Ukraine since February 2022, the report said. It only included the names of soldiers publicly identified in open source data, mainly obituaries, and warned the real toll may be twice as high. Two thirds of the dead we have identified had no links to the army prior to the invasion. Volunteers, mobilized, prisoners and private company recruits, the BBC's Russian language service said. Transnistria and Moldova, Russia's new front of escalation in Europe. The United States of America supports the sovereignty of Moldova and closely monitors the developments surrounding the so-called Transnistria, says U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller. Miller was asked to comment on appeal of Transnistria to Russia with a request for protection from Moldova. The speaker noted that the U.S. is monitoring the actions of Russia and Transnistria as Moscow plays an increasingly aggressive and destabilizing role in Europe. The United States firmly supports Moldova's sovereignty and territory within internationally recognized borders, he added. Earlier, the media reported that the deputies of Transnistria were to ask the Russian President Vladimir Putin to join the Russian Federation at the Congress. 
However, this never happened. The so-called Pridnestrovian Moldavian Republic simply called on Russia to protect them from Moldova. In particular, they addressed the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the Commonwealth of Independent States, the European Parliament, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, urging them to influence the leadership of Moldova to return to adequate dialogue and cease violations of the rights and freedoms of the residents of Transnistria. Andriy Yusov, a representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, said in a comment to RBC Ukraine that such a result is a failure for Russia. The representative of the military intelligence notes that the active disinformation campaign regarding Transnistria's plans to ask Vladimir Putin for accession to the Russian Federation indicates that an interested party was involved. When we talk about Moldova and Ukraine, it is clear who this party is. Yusov adds.